for joining us here on Cron 4 News at 2. I'm Justine Waldman. We're following developing news on the peninsula right now where a massive building fire in Redwood City has forced evacuations in the area. Crews are now getting a handle on the flames. The building, which was under construction on Middlefield Road, was right near the Costco south of Highway 84. It is an affordable housing complex that uh, officials say has now been destroyed. We do have live team coverage tracking the latest developments here. Tiffany Justice keeping an eye on the evacuations. But we're going to start with Cron Force Dan Kerman, who has the latest on crews who are battling this fire right now. Good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon. You know, more than 40 engines here battling this fire that broke out about 1015 this morning. Let's step out of the way. You can see they have made a lot of progress here. In the foreground, you will see one building. That is half of the affordable housing project. That building not destroyed. In back, an L-shaped affordable housing building. That one completely destroyed. In all, about 179 units. That doesn't mean all of them were destroyed because, again, one of the two buildings did not meet any issue with fire. This blaze broke out about 1015 this morning. We can show you some video from that. Uh, the fire apparently broke out on the fifth floor of the fire building, possibly in the insulation. Fire crews had to deal with winds blowing the uh, fire into adjacent areas where there was residences. And the key focus has been throughout the day has been to keep other buildings from catching on fire. So we are making good progress on it. Um... Yeah, it's basically burning all the, the wood uh, timbers and members, structural members uh, from the interior out. So the fire started on the north end of the building and then was pushed by the winds basically all the way over to this side. The big challenges initially are, um, you know, there's no firewalls in there. They haven't been constructed yet. So it's just a, a tinder box and the fire spreads pretty quickly. We had some decent winds kind of pushing the fire through the building. We recognized early on that this was going to be an exterior attack, as we called defensive, because the, just there's almost no way to stop it, and we want to ensure that we don't harm our firefighters also. So, um, yeah, that's our current plan, is to stay back far enough so if it collapses, we're out of the collapse zone. And we have seen various pieces of the scaffolding falling in that fire building back there. Again, uh, as you saw from that initial video, it looked terrible uh, initially about 1015. Now things are looking better, but still uh, fire crews are telling us that some of that insulation as well as embers are blowing into the neighborhood. That has resulted in spot fires. That is why they had to have evacuations and fire crews are on scene, not just battling this fire, but also any sort of spot fires that come up. But again, uh, uh, firefighters seem to be making uh, some progress at this point on this fire, and uh, we can tell you that uh, that is good news for all of those involved here. Back live now, again, we are in the unincorporated area of Redwood City uh, along Middlefield Road. Let's send it back to you. Justine? Uh, Dan, I, we see there the fire crews there trying to either wrap up or bring out an additional hose there, and the trees behind you are... Uh, moving a little bit there in the wind. Do you still feel like it's super breezy out there where you are and how thick is the smoke? You're super close to the scene. Uh, we're not having much smoke in our location, but the problem is that the smoke and the winds are blowing in a sense from right to left. And it was in those buildings from the fire building to the uh, neighborhood on the left. That's where the winds were blowing earlier, and those were the buildings that they needed to protect, as well as the one uh, right here in the foreground. Uh, but at this point, winds have died down a little bit, so that's really helped firefighters in their uh, battle to bring a stop to this blaze. We heard during our live update at noon from the fire department and the sheriff's office that that crane that we were just showing is not at any risk, they believe right now, as of collapsing. It's sort of further away from the, the building that's actually on fire. But you have seen and heard the scaffolding around that building collapse. Is that still happening right now? Well, we had seen the, again, if you take a look behind me, you will see a, a building that is yellow, uh, which is right adjacent to that crane. That is one half of the project. There is no danger to that building. Well, there's danger because there's a fire behind it, but that building has not been burned. The crane is attached to that building. It's the building behind it where the fire broke out. At this point, there does not seem to be any sort of uh, concern uh, for the crane, again, unless the fire and the embers sets that uh, building in the front on fire. But again, plenty of fire crews here to make sure that that doesn't happen.
Crowd Force Dan Kerman live for us there on the scene. We do understand that the building is a total loss. There's concern now for the neighborhood right next to that fire. The evacuations have been ordered already. Crowd Force Tiffany Justice live there on the scene there with the latest on this part. And we heard also, Tiffany, that there were 12 other spot fires that started uh, in nearby houses on their roofs and fences and in their yards because of the embers that were blowing from that massive fire. That's correct, and that is one thing that residents told me that they were concerned about. I did speak with several residents, and they're telling me that they're keeping a close eye on this construction project and the flames that they saw burning earlier and the smoke that's burning right now. You know, crews have been working really hard to make sure all the flames have been put out and all the hot spots have been put out as well. You could see that the crews are still working at this time. I also had one neighbor even tell me that she heard an explosion. So many of them initially afraid that the flames could jump or spread to nearby homes and businesses. An evacuation order is in place as crews extinguish this fire and make sure all the hot spots are out. The San Mateo County Sheriff's Office initially advising residents who live on Pacific Avenue and Calvin Avenue to evacuate immediately going door to door. Those evacuations have been extended to include those living on Dunburn Avenue from the train tracks to Middlefield Road. You know, residents telling me they cannot believe that this is happening in their neighborhood and they're hoping for the best. One resident we spoke with lives only 100 feet away from this fire. And uh, so I started uh, throwing, you know, water on top of the garage that we have, you know, because it's very close. It's about 100 feet from the, the fire. And uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, I saw the police were uh, trying to get everybody out of the out of the street, you know, so they started evacuating everybody. Yeah. And that's when the fire really got strong. I kept hearing, like, a lot of firemen and um, ambulances and everything going on, so I, I took a look out, and that's when I saw all, like, the big flames going on, and it was, like, pretty scary, and, like, you could feel, like, all the, the hotness. And then um, we heard, like, a little explosion, too, like, halfway through it, so that, like, kind of scared me because I'm, like... You never know it's going to spread to the other buildings nearby or what's going on. Yeah, so a scary moment for the residents that live nearby. We're being told by officials that so far 150 people had to be evacuated from surrounding neighborhoods, and a large chunk of Middlefield Road has been blocked off for uh, vehicles and drivers driving around the area. Back to you in studio.